for the past few days, something has been happening in Lagos. And that has been an attack on our children. I don't know, about last week, a young boy of about 12 just died. Caught attack. Just some few days, we had five, between two to five years old. All of them just lost their life. They just locked themselves in the car. And that's it. Just yesterday, the truck, somewhere in Lagos there, just killed a lot of our children that are just coming from the school. I want to read a place, Matthew 18, verse 18. It says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be lose in heaven. And I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, anything that shall, shall teaching anything, touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Praise the Lord. We are going to stand up and pray. Because the devil is going out and looking for who to devour. He's holding our children. He's killing the children. And we as Christians need to take authority. We need to take authority. Let's go begin to pray. That God in heaven stop. We want to stop every attack on our children in Lagos. Every attack of our children in Lagos. No more death in the name of Jesus. Let's open our mouths to pray. Let's open our mouths to pray. As Christians, we need to take authority. We need to take authority. We are living on earth. We need to take authority. Take authority. Bind every spirit of death. Every spirit of death that is affecting, that is attacking, that is affecting, that is attacking the children in Lagos. The children in Nigeria, ye bobo bo loka, in the great kebobo, in the great le kebobo bo shaka, and take a great le kebobo, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for those moments that you have given to us the authority to bind on it, the authority to lose on it. And you said, when we speak, Lord, that it shall be answered in heaven. When we speak, Lord, it shall be answered in, in heaven. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we bind every satanic, demonic effect that is happening right now. Every demon that is going, going around, around, that is going around and killing our children. And killing our children in school. In the name of Jesus, we bind them. We bind bind them. We bind them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We may be seated. You see, as Christians, when things happen like this, we have to be sensitive because it is when it happens, I pray it will not happen to any of us. But when you see it happening, you know, when you hear this thing, afar of the hand, you read it in the newspaper, but when it comes close to you, you begin to wonder and say, oh, please. Yesterday I was in the hospital and there was a mother that the child was just um, close. The, 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 the mother, the child attends the same school. The moment she heard about that thing, you need to see the way she was crying. She was crying. Seriously, if I, do, I was in the ward. And I, I said, well, what is wrong? And I said, look, I have to call my mom. I have to call my son. She called everybody. You could see the fear. She started weeping. And the thing just struck me. I said, ah. It is when it happens to another person. Or the person that you heard. You'll be wondering, well, you see. But when it comes close to you. Praise the Lord. It will not happen in our midst in the name of Jesus. But thank God the child was saved. The child was not among them. Because after about um, 30 minutes, they had to call the woman that the, the son is already at home. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to use this opportunity to thank my father in the Lord. 
Reverend Kasali, for giving me this opportunity to share God's words. I really mean this from my heart. See, when I, was it recently, I, some few days back, I just texted him, I said, sir, I want to develop my teaching, my word life. And I just, and I thought he's going to say, no, 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 you know, let me, and he just replied and said, yes, then he was in America and said, ah, um, Godwin, don't worry, I, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Ah. You know, I was expecting to hear a no, but he said a yes. So I thought maybe it's going to be something, you know. In fact, was it on Sunday, I didn't see the schedule, and Pastor John just came and said, no, that's one that they showed in the newsroom. It's you that is taking, I said, ah, ah. I thought it would be, you know, they'll give you a long time, you prepare, Praise the Lord. He's been a father. He's been a coach. He's really been a coach. Reverend Casali has really been a coach. I can tell you, those of us that are close, we might not be really be close, we might not be really close enough to him, but we in the pastorate, yes, they say he will correct, but you need to know he's building us every day. Everything you see us do on this altar. Minister Dari will bear witness. He's what he coached us. Sometimes when he locks us up, he up there. He'll begin to teach us. He'll begin to open the word. He'll begin to correct us. He's really been a coach and a father. I just want to appreciate him. And I want to appreciate the pastor, the leadership for giving me this opportunity. And I say, God, we bless us in Jesus' name. Well, I'm supposed to take a topic, lest ye fall. Lest he falls. And I did as the way, I prayed about it, and I did as the way Minister Dari did. And I called Reverend, I texted him, I said, I emailed him, I said, sir, please, I just have this word I want to share. Can you give me the opportunity? But I'm under authority. And yesterday, if I went there, Pastor John called me, I said, I said, he called me yesterday, he texted me yesterday, he said, you can go ahead, I've given you the blessing. And I said, thank you, sir. So by God's grace, if you have the opportunity, we will take that next week. But today we are going to take a word. This word is by the inspiration of the day Reverend was preaching. And as he was preaching, I got that message. I got that message. When he was preaching about... The Bible will explain the Bible. How many of you were here when he preached that message? The Bible will explain the Bible. And again, last month we talked about the kingdoms, the cultures of the kingdom, the currencies of the kingdom. These are words that came. And I began to build on it. I never knew, truly speaking, I never knew I'll be given the opportunity. And today I'm going to be speaking on the attacks on the world. The attacks. The attacks on the word. The attacks on the word. Let's open our Bible. I'll be fast because I want to make sure I use the time very well. I don't want to exceed the time. Praise the Lord. Matthew 13, verse 1. Matthew 13. If you have your Bible, Matthew 13. Chapter 13, verse 1. He said, the same day when Jesus out of, the, out of the house and sat by the seaside and great multitudes gathered together unto him. So he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore and he spake many things unto them in parables saying, behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and, and the fowls came and devoured them. Some fell upon the stony places where they had not much earth, and fought with the sprung up because they had no deepness of the earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Verse 7, and some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them 
and all other fell into good ground and brought forth fruits, some hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Then Jesus just made a statement. He said, who had ears to hear? Let him what? Hear. Praise the Lord. We go to verse 17, the same chapter. It says, for verily, verily, for verily I say unto you, that many prophets and, and many prophets and righteous men have desire to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parables of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, there's a lot of words going around the word that is going around. Many of them are not the word of the kingdom. We are hearing a lot of words coming from the flesh, coming from the world, coming from Satan. They are not the word of the kingdom. They are not the word of the kingdom. I'll give an example. Then they tell you, once saved is forever saved. Or they tell you, I pack grace. You have come into the grace. So even if you commit sin, there's nothing. This is not, not the word from the kingdom. This is not the word from the kingdom. All they begin to tell you, you will see how the, the devil has attacked God's word. How he attacked God's word from Genesis to Revelation. How he attacked God's word. And they will tell you, they will say, you see, Genesis 3, 2, the Bible says God created them, male and what? Female. Today they are telling us the world, the kingdom of the world is telling us, their world, the kingdom of the world is giving us what to tell us, no, there's something called non-binary. Have you heard about that one before? If you've not heard about non-binary, I'll tell you. What I mean by non-binary is this. I'm a man, but I decided that I am not, don't call me a man. The Bible says God created man and woman. Genesis, God said it. And the world system is not from the world of the kingdom. And the Bible says God created male and female, but the world system is coming and saying, no, I might be, you might look at me as a man, but don't call me a man. My gender, I might even come, I can come and say, I am it. I am not he. She can look at herself and say, no, I am not she. Call me they. In fact, I was engaging some people today, and the young doctors, they're just telling me, I was just in Nigeria. It has come to Nigeria. Somebody, if you, now, eh, when we want to, there's a place you fill forms. You know, they will say, when you're in school, they will say sex. Male or what? Male. Abroad now, and in some places, they don't write male or female. They would not write male, female, no identity. This is the word of the word. This is the word from the earth. This is not the word from the kingdom. This is not the word from the kingdom. I'll give another example. The Bible says God created Adam and brought out the reason and made a woman. And the Bible said he created them, man and woman. And Adam looked at the woman and said, this is my wife. A man shall leave his mother and his wife. And his a father, he will leave the father and the mother. And he will cleave 
it will cleave to the wife and there shall be one flesh. Do you know what the world is saying now? They are challenging God's word. They are saying it is not Adam and Eve. What you have is Adam and Steve. This is the word from the word system. They are saying it is not Adam and Eve. It is Mary and Magdalene. Not Mary Magdalene. Mary and Magdalene coming together to be one flesh. And that's what I want to tell you, that the word system, the devil is challenging the word of God every day. It's challenging the word of God every day. For verily, verse 17, I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see this. Okay, let me go to, I was in 19. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one. Then cometh the wicked one. The scripture said, then cometh the evil one. Then cometh the wicked, wicked Wicked one. Ladies and gentlemen, I remember very well. I told you that this um, topic was birthed from inspiration that our pastor, Reverend, sat here, stand here. And, was, and I, I began to add one plus one, two plus. And he made a statement. He said, the devil hmm, is not interested in the fact that he, he doesn't want to really come to attack your car. To attack your businesses. As long as you do what the devil wants you to do. As long as you are not populating God's kingdom. He will not do anything to you. But the moment you begin to receive God's word. That I'm going to explain today. And you want to run with that word. To preach. You want to do God's word. It begins to attack. It begins to attack. And that's what Jesus said here. He will begin to attack. The word. He attacks the word inside of your heart. He said, then come the wicked one and catch it away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. Now I'm going to say something here. Genesis 1. I'm going to be I'm going to paraphrase and I want to work on our imagination here. In Genesis 1. Because I want to tell us that as Christians, we shall have the understanding that we're in a kingdom. We are in the kingdom. We are in the kingdom. And that is what was preached the whole of last month. That we are in the kingdom of God. Matthew 6 talks about the fact that thy kingdom come. And that will be done. The same time, if you go a little bit down, it talks about the God seeking first the kingdom of what? God. And his righteousness. So we are in a kingdom. The moment we become born again, God translates us from the kingdom of the hell, from kingdom of the devil, and he translates us into his own kingdom. In other words... If there's a kingdom, we have a king. We have a king. And God is our king. God is our king. Praise the Lord. God is our king. And in Genesis 1, the kingdoms, God started creating the kingdom. Call it the creature. Call it the world. Call it the universe. He created, the Bible said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without void. And the Bible said he began to create. He created the firmament. He created the seas. He created the fish, the bed. And as he goes down, the Bible said he sat within himself and said, let us make man in our own image. This kingdom has been prepared. This kingdom has been made. Let us make man to dwell in this kingdom. Because I want to have a fellowship. And the Bible talks about the fact that when he made man, man began to go around and he told man, look for a partner. 
And any partner that comes before you, name it. And the Bible says Adam began to name. He began to name this one fish. He began to name this one tilapia, lion. Everyone, the trees, everybody, he began to name. But the Bible said man did not find the help meet. Praise the Lord. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. The Bible said in that moment, God saw. And God said, in this kingdom, you need a help meet. You need a help meet. And the Bible said, God caused man to sleep. And he took the rib and he formed the woman. And the Bible said, Adam saw the woman and said, this is my help meet. Praise the Lord. Everything was looking good. The scripture says, the serpent, a sub to one, an animal, came to the woman and he deceived. I didn't want to go. He deceived the woman. And the woman took of the apple. He ate and gave. He ate and gave the man. And after he gave the man, they saw that they were naked. And when they were naked, they looked at themselves. And that moment, they heard the sound of God coming in the garden. And God called, Adam, where are thee? Where are you? And Adam said, God, I'm hiding from you because I saw that I'm naked. The first thing God said, who told you that you are naked? That is a word from the kingdom of darkness. Who told you? Because God never told them that they were naked. God never told them that they were naked. It was the serpent, the devil that looked and said, if the day you eat, you know that you are naked. And the Bible said God began, after the whole, God now began to curse. And God caused the woman, and God caused the man, and God looked at the serpent. And say, let's go to Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3. Praise the Lord. I'm going somewhere. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 3.1. Genesis 3.1. Genesis chapter 3. Media, if you are. Genesis Three, one. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruits of the trees of the garden, but of the fruits of the trees which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not die. You can see the way he contradicts God's word. For God dwelt know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and, knowing good and evil. Let's go to verse 14. And the Lord said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, verse 14, Thou art cursed above all cattle. Now you see, God cursed the animal. Upon the belly shall thou go, and thus shall thou eat all the days of thy life. Now look, you see, if you look at it, you will think he's still talking to the animal. He said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed. And a what? A seed. It shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Ladies and gentlemen, the day the devil in the garden of Eden heard this word, he trembled. I will tell you why he trembled. In James, the Bible said you believe in God. But Satan, the demons, they believe and they what? They trembled. 
The day he heard this word coming from God, the Father in his kingdom sat on his kingdom and said, The seed shall bruise your head. That seed shall bruise the head. From that moment, from that genesis, Satan began to attack the word. He began to attack the word. He attacked the word to the point that he never cared whether he kills people. Even when God said, okay, I'm going to pick Noah. And when God destroyed the whole earth, then he was happy. He said, okay, maybe the word, is the seed is coming from Noah. From there, just look from the Bible. Prophet Moses talked about it. The prophets talked about it. And the Satan knew that this world will come to be. He set up his, all his weapons against this world. Against this world. Against this world in Genesis. To the point that even when the prophets started talking, they started talking about the mysteries. They spoke in mysteries because he was looking he was going around looking, where will the seed come from? Where will the seed come from? When the Bible talks about that, it's coming from the Judah. He went to Judah and deceived Judah. He left Judah and see, from Abraham, look at all the persecution. He attacked the world. He attacked the world. Praise the Lord. I'm going somewhere. He attacked the word. Remember, God is the king of our kingdom. Satan attacks the word. He attacks everything that comes out from the kingdom because he, was, he knows that what God has said will come to be. He knows that when the seed in this shall come, he will bruise his head. When the seed that God has spoken will come, it will bruise his head. Let's go to John chapter 1. And you begin to see, at that point, it will become open more. John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1. Media, are you there? John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse, praise the Lord. Thank you. In the beginning was what? And the word was with who? And the word was, no. and the word was God. The moment Christ was there, the moment he spoke the word, he looked and said, something is coming. Verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of, the man, of men. Let's go to, and the light shined in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God. Imagine the devil hearing that the seed will come and bruise. And the only thing you will have the opportunity to do is that he will always also bruise his heels. And what he did was that God used mysteries. Because God knows indeed that the devil will attack the world. He so much attacked the world that even when it comes to the point that when Jesus Christ was to be born, things began to happen. And after he was born, when the wise men got to Jesus Christ, they first of all went to Herod and they told Herod, they said, Herod, we saw we are wise men from the east and we saw that a king has been born. And Herod said, I don't know about this king. Is it here? No, he's not here. And the Bible said, Herod told them and said, go and worship. When you have done it, come back. 
so that I too can worship the king. And do you know what happened? He called, the, by the time the wise men refused to go, he called all the wise men and said, look into the word, scripture. You think it was Herod that was doing that? No, it was the devil. He was ready to kill the word that has been born. He said, look into the scripture and search. Is it true a king will be born? Where will the king be born? When will the king be born? And the scriptures, the wise men saw and opened and they said, it's true. The man shall be born, the baby shall be born in social time. At this appointed time. And he said, okay. He missed that opportunity. Because the wise men refused to go. Do you know what he did? He did something that shook the whole earth. He called the soldier and said, kill all the child, the newborn babies from two years town. Kill all of them. The adventure as they kill them, they will kill the seed. Do you think Satan is daft to say, they will kill the seed because I don't want this seed to come and bruise my head. I don't want the seed to take the kingdom from me. Because why? Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is the moment God spoke in John 1. He said he is the word. And that word was made what? Flesh. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. Is the word that has been turned to flesh. Is the word that has been turned to flesh. He was in the world, and the world made by him. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not, John 1, 10. And he came unto his own, and in his own received him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received to them, he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And the world was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And John bear witness of this. Praise the Lord. Jesus was the word that God spoke. God spoke the seed from his kingdom. Remember in Matthew, you are still going to go back there. The word from the kingdom. And he said, thy seed of the woman shall bruise your head. Thy seed, that word came out. And from that moment, the devil used everything. After that, when Jesus, when he grew up and he wanted to start his ministry, <laughs> guess what happened? Because the Satan will not relent. He went to meet Jesus after he was fasting 40 days and 40 nights. I will show you. In Matthew 4, and he said, ah, ah, now I know that you have succeeded to come to the world. <laughs> this world that I'm ruling, you have succeeded to come. You have been transformed from the world, and now you are now flesh. But I'm going to make a compromise with you. Praise the Lord. I'm going to make a compromise. And he tempted Jesus three times. He said, turn this stone into bread. You will see it in the parables. He was trying to put riches, deceptive of riches, trying to manipulate the word so that the word can be manipulated. It's an attack on the word. And Jesus knew that. And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. Ah! Maga de Gregeboso. He turned in again and said, come. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something, the last one. He said, he took him on the mountain and said, look at all this world. <laughs> look at all this world. Beautiful words. Look at them. These are the kingdom of the earth. These are the kingdoms of the earth. If you bow down and worship me, I will give them to you. And Jesus looked at him. 
Matthew 4. Matthew 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness of it, to be tempted of, devil, of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and afterward hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacles of the temple and said unto me, If thou be the Son of God, if thou be the seed that the king said in his kingdom, if you are the word that God has spoken in the garden of, king, of, of Eden, he said, if thou be the, the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they hear thee up, that shall they bear thee up, lest any, any time thou dash thy foot against that stone. Is attacking the word. Jesus is attacking the word. Yet, and Jesus said, unto him, it is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And the devil taketh him up unto the, into an exceeding high mountain. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world. W-O-R-L-D. All the kingdoms of the world. And the glory of them. And said him all. And said unto him, all these things will I give thee. If thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil lifted him, left, lifted him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. That was not the end. Devil knew at this time what he needs to do is to kill the word. Because the word has been turned to flesh. The word from the Garden of Eden has been turned to flesh. And Jesus was going around. And the next thing that he did was he attacked and crucified him. And after that, the Bible said Jesus died. He went to hell. And there took the authority. Took the key, took the key and bruised the head of Satan. Now, let me tell you what Satan did. And Jesus even came out. He said, look at my palms. You can see the bruises of the heels, my heels that he did. You can see the holes. These are just bruises. These are bruises that the Bible talks, God talks about in Genesis 3. This is just a bruise. But I have defeated him. I have crushed his head. Hallelujah. I have crushed his head. I have crushed his head. He cannot do anything. And now that word has been changed. Open your Bibles to Matthew 24. And I will tell you because the devil will not stop. The devil is not going to stop. And Jesus in Matthew 24. In Matthew 24. Sorry, Mark 16. Mark 16, verse 15. Mark 16, verse 15. Media, because I want to be fast now. Mark 15, verse 16. Mark 16. Mark 16. Mark 16. Mark media. If you are there, can you read? 16. 15. Okay. I'm there already. He said, now let me go to 14. He said, after 16, 14. He said, afterward he appeared unto 11. The 11. And they sat at the meat and unbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. 
because they believed not that which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into the world. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be condemned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. Look at verse 18. They shall take up what? The serpents. In Genesis 2. In Genesis 3, the Bible said the serpent was under the sea, or was under the sea, and he shall crush his head. But in Matthew, Jesus said, you shall take up the serpent. You shall take up the serpent. The word has come to us as Christians. We shall take up serpents. It's time for us to go out and preach. We shall take up the serpent, and when we drink, it shall not hurt us. When, we, when it hits us, we shall not be hot. There won't be any bruises because Jesus has taken the bruises for us. Jesus has taken the bruises for us. Jesus, I said, they shall take up the serpents and if they drink any deadly things, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the word to us today. The moment Jesus said that, the Bible said, Jesus ascended. And so then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received of heaven, up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of him. He makes us to understand he's the king that sat at the right hand of God, God's kingdom. And he has declared his word, the word of kingdom, the word of the kingdom, the word of the kingdom, that we should go out and preach the word. Do you not think, in fact, in 1 Corinthians 2, the Bible said, 2 8, it said, if the demons have known, they will not have what? Crucified. If they had known that this is what is going to happen, he would have just said, they would not have crucified. And from that moment Jesus spoke that word, the devil said, look, okay, I'm not going to get, I can't get you again. But this word that you have spoken, I know it's coming to life. Just the same way God spoke in the garden of Eden, as they said, the seeds are bruised, he said. He, Jesus spoke and he went up to heaven. And it's a time, and that is why if you look from the time Jesus spoke up to this moment, the devil has been attacking that word. That word that has been written in Matthew 16. That is the word that the devil is attacking. He's attacking that word in your life. Because he knows that when you go out and you preach the word, you are taking up serpents. When you preach the word, you are healing people. When you preach the word, you are delivering people. And he knows indeed his hand has come. And that is why the devil will attack the world. He will attack the world. Everything you can think of. The apostles were killed. Some of them were beheaded. Some of them were persecuted. Before Paul turned to Paul, the Bible said in Acts that he was going about killing and arresting the Christians. And they went to the authorities and said, Give me authority. As I go, the Bible says he was raging. <laughs> How can a man? I was thinking, what I was, a man, eh? I, what, I, what, what am I doing? I'm preaching the word. I didn't do anything, no. And you think another man will see me. I didn't say I'm fighting you. And somebody will just be in rage. <laughs> no, no, you are kidding. No, that man does, he's not, he's, saying, he's the devil. Is the devil. He has entered into them. Is the devil. The Bible said Saul was in rage. He was in rage. And he said, give me anybody that I see on the road. And I notice that they are Christian. I will arrest them. And the Bible said as he was going with that rage, I'm going to kill. And what happened? Jesus appeared. Hey, hey. Makade Gregory. And say, Saul, Saul, why are 
are you what? Persecuting me, the word that has spoken. I that have spoken the word that my children should go and preach. I must say, what? Lord, I don't know. And you know the whole story. The devil is not interested. Let me put it in a paragraph. He's not interested in directly the fact that you're losing your cars. No. Reverend said that, and I, I thought about it many times. As Christians, not as unbelievers. He's not interested in the fact that you don't build houses or because he did it to Job. He's not interested in that. The devil is interested. The day you pick up this word that Jesus spoke, go into the world, and you want to pick up the serpent to destroy, that is when the devil will attack the world. And that is why anytime I see Reverend stand there and he begins to preach the word, I always pray for him. Because more not, we are few men of God. If I yesterday, by the time I opened the scripture, I knelt down, I started praying for him. Because I know he's a man to be attacked. Why? Because he carries the word. He carries the word of the kingdom. He carries the word of the kingdom. He carries the word and he hears from God. And he hears from God. And he comes to say it out to the world, to the kingdom, to the prince and everyone. Do you think the devil will not attack him? Do you think the devil, because it's not because he's, he's a human being that the devil, no, because as he stands to sit and hear God's word, and hear God's word, he comes out and says, this is what the Lord has said. And you think the devil will not attack? You think the devil will not attack those kind of people? You think it is the people, in fact, you know when you are in social media, Facebook and all of them, you begin to see different things. You see some people, they say they are man of God. And they will begin to do rituals. Some people will say we are pastors. They will, and you, know, you think the devil doesn't deal with those ones. They know themselves. They know themselves. And you see that even the last day, the Bible says, the Antichrist will come to create what? Science and what? And the Bible said even the spirit of the Antichrist, Antichrist is already moving. So they know themselves. But they that are called by God. Hi. Because they are going to speak the word from the kingdom. And that is why Jesus said, he that hear, has hear, let him hear. Hallelujah. So I also pray every day. I say, God, the moment I understand the scripture, I say, God, please keep my father for me. Guide him. When attacks come like this, when I say all these things, I say, my mind, I'll go back again. I say, you cannot, devil, you will not shut, you will not shut this man. You will not keep him from speaking the truth. You will not discourage him. You will not discourage him because he has a word for a generation. And you have not seen anything. He's not here, I don't know if he's here. But I can tell you, you have not seen anything. But he, we should get ready. Because when you have a man of God that has the word, not only will the attack come from Satan to him, it's going to come to every one of us. That's why we need to guide ourselves. We need to be prayerful and guide ourselves. We need to be prayerful and pray. Because you see, when we guide ourselves and pray for the plan of God that has the truth that speak, our life too will become prosperous. We begin to be blossom. And that is the way the kingdom works. Strike the sheep, shepherd. And the sheep will what? Scatter. But I thank God for my shepherd. He's always praying. He's always in the spirit. Let's go back to Matthew 13. Where we started from. I'm going to be rounding up now. Matthew 13. And I want to explain the scripture. 13 verse 18. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. 
When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, so you will now hear that there's a word of the kingdom. It's not all words that we should hear. It's not all words that we should understand. I've given example. You will hear them. You need to go to scripture and look. Is this the word of the kingdom? Is this the word for, of the kingdom? Now, go back. 18. 18. Okay, sorry. 19 back. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then, the, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This he which received, this is he which received seed by the wayside. And Jesus began to read the scripture. Now number one, when you hear the word, Jesus has spoken the word. The scriptures have been released. The man of God will stand here and there's Rema coming. You will sit and pray and God will put a word inside of your heart. And you begin to understand the word. That the moment you don't allow the world to dwell inside of you, the wicked ones will come and take it out from your heart. Why? Because he's attacking the world. He's attacking Jesus Christ. He's attack it's not you. He's attacking the world. He's attacking Jesus Christ. That is the first one. By the wayside, every word you hear, brew on it. Search the scriptures. Understand it. The next verse, verse 19, verse 19. Okay, when anyone, okay, go to 20. But he that received the seed into the stony place, the same he, you see, he was saying, the seed, the seed. Can you now understand what I've been saying since? The seed. And he that received the seed into the stony place. The same is he that heareth the word. The heareth the word. And, and all with joy. Happy. Ah, I've received the word. <laughs> ah, I receive it. Next verse. Yet, I did not root in himself. See, there's no, it's not just easy for you to come and hear God's words every day. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, and you just hear the word, and you get excited, and you just go back. And it, because that word, if it doesn't have a root, it's going to be on a stony ground. And that word, Jesus, will not develop inside of you. Yet, had he not root in himself, but dwelt for a while. For when the tribulation of, or persecution, can you remember, Jesus Christ was persecuted. Jesus Christ was persecuted. The world was persecuted. You that have the world, you shall be persecuted. Arises because of the world. By and by, he is offended. Next verse. He also that receives seed among the tongues. He that heareth the word and the care of this word. And the deceitfulness of riches. That is what G uh, uh, the Satan did. On the mountain, when he went to, when he was tempted Jesus, it was deceitfulness of riches. He said, come, I will take you up there. I will, sh he showed him the kingdom of the earth. The Bible said it was excellent and beautiful. He said, I will give you these riches. If you can just bow down before me. And choke the world. Today, if you look at the way the devil is coming, it's not... We hardly do we hear people. Yes, I heard in Abuja, was it two years ago or three years ago, a woman was killed. Hardly do we hear. But in other countries like China, they're still persecuting them. But now the Satan doesn't use to persecute, don't carry the Bible. No, 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 no. no. Now what he does is deceitfulness of riches. And we did, if you remember, we did a topic last month on the deceitfulness of riches. If you have been coming to church, you can see that all this thing we have been preaching is to Enable us to know and be wise that the devil is the one doing this thing. The sinfulness of riches. He begins to bring good things or he begins to prevent the things of the world. So that you cannot read God's word again. You will not come to church and hear his word. You will be adamant and stony in your heart. Because he doesn't want you to receive the word. He begins to give you and say, okay, you know, bro, hey, I will give you a job that you will not be able to come to church on Sunday. Deceitfulness of riches. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. The sinfulness of riches. Let's look at the next verse. Praise the Lord. But he receives seed into the good, but he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, one, and understandeth it, two, which also beareth fruit, three, and not just bearing fruit, and what? Bring it forth. Four things you must do to God's word. Four. One. You must hear the word. And you must hear, no, hear word from where? Where will you? That's what I've been building since. You must hear word from the kingdom of God. That's what I've been building. The word you, are, you must hear is from the kingdom of God. It's not every word that comes out that is from the kingdom. And that's why Jesus said, hear he. So you must hear the word. You must hear the word and understand. In other words, you have to set scriptures. You have to come for wisdom word service. You have to go and meet. There was something that happened, was it two weeks ago? I was reading something on uh, dreams and visions, you know. I was just meditating on Joel 2 and I was reading it. And it got to a point, I didn't even understand it again. Ah, I said, what will I call now? Ah, oh, Reverend is not around. Yeah, what will I do? Ah, I was so troubled for two days. I said, because I know how busy he is. He was then. I said, okay. I said, okay, let me just do this. Early in the morning. I said, okay, by now, maybe I just text him, sent him an email. Sir, I read so, so, so thing. I don't understand this. Can you please? In fact, I won't lie to you. Within, it was like a, I got the message. God, me, don't worry. I'm going to give you a call. I, I thought maybe he's going to give me a call later, later. Within the next 30 minutes, Reverend called me. And he's begun to expound the scripture. In fact, by the time he opened the scripture, I said, yes, sir, I understand, sir. Is the understanding. Understanding. In fact, do you know that the moment he said that, in, I was, you know, when you, when you go for an exam and you pass the exam, you, the result is not your out. You just go in and say, ah, I understand this thing. I was going there, I said, yes. In fact, I said, yes. Understanding the word. Let's go on. So, hearing the word, understanding the word, let's go on, let's go on. Hallelujah. Hearing the word, understanding it, which also beareth fruit. So, when you understand the word, you begin to bear fruits. The fruit comes in outside of you, loving, being loving, being showing kindness. The fruit, you begin to go out to preach the word, to heal the sick. The fruit, you begin to cast out demons, serpents. The fruit, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, because I'm closing. Which also bear a fruit. And not only are you bearing these fruits, you begin to bring it forth. You begin to say, ah, Pastor John, take. God loves you. Sir, God loves you. Ah, I heal you. You are healed in Jesus' name. Oh, my brother. God, we, you begin to bring forth the fruits. And I tell you, as you do that, the devil will begin to attack you. And as, at, as he attack you, you're going up. And Jesus will begin to look at you, just as he saw Stephen. And the Bible said, when Stephen, I'm closing now. When Stephen, when they persecuted Stephen, and they arrested Stephen, and they took Stephen to the court. And they had said, Stephen, do you have anything to say? Is that Acts 9, if I believe? And Stephen, at, at nine. And Stephen said, okay, because Stephen has knowledge. Go and read it in Acts 7. The Bible said he was killed in knowledge. And he stood before them. And he began to speak from Genesis. And he began to take the scripture. And he talked about Abraham. When he moved to Abraham, he went to Moses. And the Bible said by the time he almost got to the end and he got to where Jesus is, and he said, I look, hey, my God, because the world is inside him. I look and I saw the Son of Man standing. Yeah, let's, put that, let's be on our seat. Let's be on our feet. And I saw the Son of Man standing at the right. He wasn't sitting down. The Bible said in Matthew, when Jesus was raising up, he went and he sat down. 
But when Stephen looked, the Bible said the people saw Stephen's face was like an angel. And he saw because the word was inside of him. He has understood the word. Not only that, he began to bear fruit because he was going from one place to the other. And he was giving forth. And the Bible said, he said, I saw the Son of Man standing. Standing. And guess what? Maybe what Jesus was saying, yeah, yeah, who is this? Who is this, my son? My beloved son. And the Bible said, I thought Jesus would come down and say, no, I will destroy you. Don't touch him. Do you know what they did? They took him out. They what? Abba. Because he spoke the word inside. Let's just begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Pray for yourself. That the word of God that he has spoken to you will gain growth. Ruth. It will gain roots in your heart. It will gain roots in your heart. You shall not fail in this time. You will not fail in this time. Begin to pray that God will help you. That God will help you. And you will hear the word. You will hear the word of the kingdom. You will hear the word of the kingdom. No matter what the attack of the devil will be. No matter what the attack of the enemy will be. You understand the kingdom. You understand the word. And the word will take roots inside of you. You will not be moved by the deceitfulness of riches. You will not be moved by all the chokiness of stone. But rather the word shall dwell inside of you. And you shall be bearing fruit. In Jesus name we are praying. Father, we just thank you. We worship you, Lord. We thank you for your words. We thank you for your word, Lord. We say, Lord, even as your word has come, we just thank you. We thank you for all the words we've heard. We said this word will come to dwell inside of us in Jesus' name. I pray that every one of us will go home. That God will speak to us in our hearts. And we begin to carry the word that God has spoken to us in our closest time. And God, you will begin to bear fruit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We shall bear fruit in Jesus' name. We shall bear fruit in Jesus' name. Men shall test of our fruit. Men shall test of our fruit. We will hold on serpent and we shall bruise his head again. We will hold on scorpions and we shall crush them again. That men shall come to Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.